How to get into voiceover? Oh, boy, that's a loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> get into voiceover. Um, I lied a little bit when I was younger. I'm like, Gary, I, uh, my agent said, you know how to do voices? I went, yeah, sure. <laughs> I said, well, there's a G.I. Joe audition. So I showed up, and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Six weeks later, General Hawk, and that started the whole thing. So I guess I must have, I don't know. I was in radio before, so I didn't have the, the training. So I got, uh, once I got the first cartoon, I started doing uh, a lot of theater. Uh, did some improv, did more improv in L.A. than I did in Canada, but... Uh, that's all that stuff's important to understand yeah. the, the acting. There's a little exercise I talked to Mike Ivy. Where's Mike? Is Mike here? Uh, earlier today. Um, is to try to become a human being. Uh, well, no, that's sort of thing. Andy Circus. Andy Circus, you know, he's brilliant. Um, if you can sort of, when you're watching, don't scroll through nature programs and go, I don't want to watch this boring. Watch the animals. It's an old animal exercise. Watch the animals and how they react and how they are. If you're asked to create some sort of, sort of a character. Think of some sort of animal that he, this guy might represent. If he's of course, sort of big, maybe, maybe he's an ape. Maybe he's that. And sort of find out where that comes from. And study the animal and how he moves. Alec Willow's perfect example of a spider. You know, so that's, it's just, and then the human being and the personality <coughs> comes through that. It's just a few little things. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing away here. I don't know where I am. But, but that's a little bit of, information you can take and use and play with. So does that make any sense? Did I answer a question? It sort of makes sense. Yeah, right. Okay. In a very strange way. All well, they've had is coffee it today, can sense. you tell? <laughs> and this is what it was like as a kid. I got to listen to these amazing voiceover actors talking and doing banter. Like, this is my entertainment. I, I love it. <laughs> um, no, thank you. Amazing memories. Um, uh, it, unless there's more, I, I, I would add a couple things too. Um, <clears throat> my, uh, just briefly, my name is David Mendenhall. If, if I haven't met you yet or you don't know who I am, when I was younger, I did voiceovers a lot. One of them was the Transformers, uh, and I did a number of other shows as well back at that time. Uh, as I grew older, I eventually went to school, college, did a, a lot of uh, a lot of studies and then got into show business. Uh, I, I stayed a performer, but I also did things behind the scenes, producing. So uh, a lot of things I'll, I'll have to offer have to do with maybe the business side of it, thinking about it. Um, but a couple things that occur to me in terms of becoming a, a voiceover artist, and it was mentioned, uh, has to do with acting. I think one thing to that, that is out there for you if you're interested in using your voice to perform. Uh, one of the cool things about, uh, like DVDs now, for instance, are the special features. As you know, a lot of the animated films now show the actors, and nowadays it's mostly big movie stars, but, but actors in the booth actually doing their performing, you know, acting. If, if you're interested in acting in voiceovers, my thought is just be an actor. There's, to me, there's, and there never was, there's no difference acting in front of the camera, except you, you don't have to put on makeup and a costume in the booth, but mm. there was never a difference for me acting in front of a camera versus acting in, in a booth in front of a microphone. Uh, and putting an actual performance into it. And, uh, and if you watch actors doing that acting, I think you can see that. Uh, so in, in a sense, I think part of it for you as a performer is, is the study, the study of acting itself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so entertaining. And, and yesterday when we did the, um, the script reading, it's so fun to listen to all the different voices, all the different characters that you came up with uh, because yeah, absolutely. That's that's a huge part of it is is being able to do different voices, accents, um, inflections, higher or lower. Uh, you know, the one of the people of a thousand voices, Frank Welker. You know, can can do almost anything with with uh, you know with with his instrument. Mm. Um, it's it's definitely part of it. I, I call that technique. Being able to uh, 
know how your your voice works, how how as as was already mentioned, how the technology works versus how you interact with it. Uh, but again, for me, a lot of it is it's acting. It is acting. So if you have interest in it, that's that's one thing I'd suggest. Um, and maybe that means going to school and studying it, or just doing it on your own. Yeah. What what I yeah, wanted to add yeah. to the conversation as well is it, it is a business. So if you're interested in being an actor, on uh, professionally, uh, of course, one way to start is doing your own projects. Uh, do it yourself. Now, as you know, it's it's accessible to pretty much anybody that wants to be in the business to start making projects.